Hey SB fam, carnivores, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you all are having a meat-fueled good -a day so far. I would love to be updated on your carnivore journeys. Have you guys noticed any changes or benefits? Let me know down below in the comments. So today's video features the brilliant Dr. Robert Kiltz. Dr. Kiltz is a reproductive endocrinologist and the director and founder of CNY Fertility. Most importantly, Dr. Kiltz is a passionate advocate of the carnivore diet. He's been carnivore for more than 10 years now, and we discuss everything from the best frequency of eating to reach our optimal health, fertility, and body composition. And Dr. Kills shares his carnivore food plan that he created and recommends for us all, which is called the Baby's Diet, B-E-B-B-I-S. So you guys will find out exactly what this diet is about, how often he recommends us eat throughout each day, and what exercises he deems harmful. His words of advice and wisdom applies to not just us women, but for women and men. And of course, since Dr. Kills is a fertility expert, I asked him all of the juicy details on fertility, and I had him bust all of the crazy myths centered around fertility for both men and women. As always, if you are new here and looking for a community, feel free to join mine. It is open 24-7, 365 days a year, the Steak and Butter Gang. Feel free to go to sbgmeetup.com or click the link down below in the description to learn more. So without further ado, let me invite on my special guest, Dr. Robert Kiltz. Welcome, Dr. Kiltz. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure. I've been following you. So excited to see what you're doing and sharing. It's so important. Absolutely. So I first want you to share with my audience how you came across the keto and carnivore diet, because you are seriously a rare gem, a practicing fertility specialist and doctor who promotes the carnivore diet. So tell us. I'm a Mediterranean origin Italian, grew up in LA, ate everything. I suffered since I was a child from migraines, bowel problems. Uh, as I developed in my 30s and 40s, kidney stones, bowel bleeding, hemorrhoids, uh, arthritis, psoriasis. Uh, I had dyslexia as a child. I mean, it really, really, really has gone for so long in my life. And uh, in my early 50s, I kind of learned about paleo and then keto. At mid 50s, I, I was watching some guy that was carnivore. And it was pretty, pretty amazing what he was lean and strong and healthy. And I'm like, hmm, maybe I should look at this and, and make some changes myself. And I went carnivore at 55 in less than a month, my bowel bleeding, arthritis, psoriasis, migraines gone. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, why? Because I did better on paleo. I did better on keto. I exercised, but not until I went carnivore did it completely go away. And so my brain was like, okay, I've got to dig deep and find the reason why this is true. Mm -hmm. And that sent me on this journey to share it, to write books about it, do blogs about it. And, and I've seen so many changes. All of my problems went away. I'm 66 as of this week. I don't exercise regularly and I've never felt better. And I've been sharing it for over 10 years and people getting pregnant having babies on it. Absolutely. So I watch your videos a lot and I just love how you focus on the same. It is important what you put in your mouth and mind. So why do you say that? Well, well, let's maybe go back 20 years, uh, 20 years ago when I was developing my fertility centers uh, in upstate New York, mostly I began to focus on stress, anxiety, fear, worry, depression, and talked about positivity and, and why spirituality and a mindset is so critical for our lives in every way possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I came upon the paleo and keto and carnivore. So it just came to the most important thing. What we put in our mind and our mouth is critical to this miracle machine. And, and so um, it's not easy, but anyone can do easy. Mm -hmm. uh, all of us can do hard, but we have to have the proper motivation and the mentors to help us get there. So personally, I do prayer and meditation several times a day. I read books and watch things that are positive, which, and I, and I listen and learn from a lot of, of nutritional experts, but again, nutritional experts uh, are very different than I learned at medical school and residency and practice. Uh, so now I really focus on it. It's so critical. 
uh, that we have to be careful about what we put in these two things. Mm -hmm. And that's what this machine is all about. And, and it's, it's something, again, I practice every day. I share it every day. I'm very boring. I eat pretty much the same thing every day. Yeah. We should, we feed our animals or the same thing every day. We should do the same thing from time to time. Some variety is okay, but you're going to have to be careful because you may suffer from that. Yeah. So since you did mention what you typically do every day, same thing every day, let's start from your daily, uh, you know, life and diet. What does Dr. Robert Kilt eat in a typical day? Well, I pretty much eat the same ribeye steak every single day. It's very fatty. It's very rare. Uh, I put butter on top of it. I usually cook it in a, in a very hot pan and I take the fat in the pan and pour it back on the steak. And then I add mold and salt. Uh, I will quite often uh, eat foie gras, uh, uh, fatty uh, goose or duck liver, usually duck liver, mm -hmm. because it, it has a lot of the minerals and vitamins that we might be missing otherwise. Uh, most of the, the fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K are really critical. They come in the fatty meat. And so too often there's lean meat is everywhere, chicken and fish and even steak in general is lean because that's how it's, it's cultivated and, and sold. People won't buy fatty meat. Um, I occasionally do an egg. I 99% eat only dinner uh, because breakfast, you know, once you start with breakfast, you want to do a snack and lunch and snack and dinner. Yeah. But truly, we've been sold three to six meals a day, which is deadly. Even if you eat a plant-based diet, but you go to one meal a day and you add the fat, that'll significantly improve your, your environment of your body. Uh, so for me, I always share, this is, this is like my standard, oh. right? Uh, I do, I make an ice cream and you can go on my website and look, it's really simple and you could do it. I'm not trademarking this. It's amazing. Very little white sugar, in my opinion, is okay from time to time. It's the complex carbs that are deadly for us. But, uh, you know, you have to reward yourself. You, it, life is about some rewards, but not every day. All right. Uh, but steak, butter, salt. I mean, that's my, my, my usual. Amazing. So with the ice cream real quick, is it okay to make it without the sugar? Because I know a lot of uh, my followers and viewers, they find that anything sweet will trigger their cravings, the desire for more of the sweet foods. Oh, absolutely. The reason sugars are so addictive is because they were only available in a very short amount of time. And so when you found them, you wanted to eat as much as you can because sugar is absorbed, goes to the liver and is converted to fat because mm -hmm. fat is the only fuel for our mitochondria, hands down, mm -hmm. and it's critical to be in our body. So, but yeah, you can, you don't have to do, I mean, cream and a little bit of eggs. Oh my God, it's so tasty. Yeah. And if you add a little bit of salt to it, just on the top, not make, make it, but it, it may be all you need. But you know, my opinion, as you get to a point where you can control what you put in here, uh, then you can from time to time. I mean, I love a little bit of chocolate, dark chocolate, and I do have my ice cream, but those are my really two uh, only, only treats, treats that I managed to put into this uh, machine. So I caught you saying fat is the only fuel for a mitochondria. I live by that. I truly do because I felt the experience of what fat did for me. Uh, so I was vegan for six years. I lost my period and that was a huge red flag. And then going carnivore, upping the fats extremely high. I really was like mostly eating fat, just gorging the butter because I was craving for it so strongly. After just two months of that, my period came back. So could you explain to our audience how fat is the answer, the only fuel? Well, anorexia is a very deadly uh, condition. Um, obesity, we blame on all the causes of disease, but obesity is not the cause of disease. It took me a while to figure mitochondria. So the mitochondria is the cellular uh, uh, machinery that actually makes ATP. Mm -hmm. ATP is the energy that 
that moves everything. It's the, it's the, it's the match that lights the fire that fuels the movement of everything. Acetyl-CoA is the precursor to ATP. It's made from fatty acids, like rapidly. Sugar must be converted to pyruvate in order to make acetyl-CoA, but that only happens in the liver via insulin. So I, it's, it's kind of a concepts are difficult, but the science that we're taught is wrong. And since it's wrong, but we always believe what's wrong, we'll never get to the right avenue here. But we have been blaming fat as the cause of disease. And so no one is eating fat. Mm -hmm. We're eating a high plant-based, low animal fat diet. All meat you buy is lean meat, no fat. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're seeing tremendous number of women with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, endometriosis, low ovarian reserve, cancers, um, infertility, miscarriages, male and female, by the way, it happens to everyone. So thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, for the last three and a half million years ago, ago until about 10,000 years ago, we primarily ate fatty meat. We killed the animal. We opened the animal up and we ate everything inside the animal and including lots of animal fat, bone marrow, bone broth, whatever we ate. We did not eat lean meat. Lean meat is for the scavengers that can't get anything else. So we were likely hunters and scavengers, not hunters and, and, and gatherers, right? We didn't gather seeds and nuts of any significance unless we were starving, all right? So as I began to see the problem with, with some of the leanest people drop dead, the fattest people get the chronic diseases, but we get fat from only one thing in this world today, a plant-based low animal fat diet. And so by simply adding fat to the diet, by the way, the nutritional solution for the optimal human being, animal fat is what it is, not oils, by the way, plant oils, animal fat. Right. When you eat animal fat, it reduces inflammation in the gut, okay? okay. It protects the glycobiome, the glycomucopolysaccharide layer that mm -hmm. is the most critical layer of the GI tract and the vessels. The glycobiome or the glycocalyx, almost no one has heard of, but that is the most powerful, amazing entity of our bodies. Mm -hmm. It's damaged due to sugar, but fat protects the glycocalyx. We actually infuse intralipids, which is a plant oil fat into the veins to help people get pregnant. Uh -huh. um, it's not the best one, but it's what we have. But if you can eat butter, and I, I've seen you eat butter, <laughs> and, I, and I eat butter like cheese with salt on it, it is amazing. That reduces inflammation. That's why... Even as a vegan or a vegetarian or an omnivarian, you by simply adding a ton of fat, you may improve the human body. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really is, if you get to the real optimal nutritional solution, it's carnivore, but it's fatty meat, uh, FMNC, fatty meat, no carbs, one meal a day, that's the home run. So one meal a day, let's actually focus on the fasting aspect. I typically just organically ended up uh, loving one meal a day after six months of pretty much eating all day every day, but that was because I was extremely malnourished. So I ate so much fat, I ate so frequently. After six months, my body kind of just calmed down. I'm not as ravenous anymore, and OMAD is the way for me now. So why do you choose one meal a day? Historically, again, the last three and a half million years, uh, we um, hunted for food and finding food was not easy. We likely ate one meal a day or less. We never ate three to six meals a day ever uh, until we became domesticated um, by the uh, priests, the popes, presidents, and the pharaohs. Uh, we became captured, fed uh, mush, and mush plants are highly addictive hallucinogenic and controlling. Basically, when we ate the plants, we were now controlled and we were addicted. We'd do anything for it. But basically one meal a day is the gut 
think of the gut. And, and I, I've got some stuff on the wall over there. Maybe yeah. one day I'll share it all with you. But okay. think of the gut as a bucket. And whatever's in the bucket is going to be secreted into the bloodstream until the bucket is empty. Mm -hmm. Since the bucket is fed three times a day, minimum, the bucket is never empty. And since most people are eating carbohydrates, sugar is always secreted into the bloodstream 24 7, 365. Mm -hmm. Sugar must go to the liver, it must be broken down and converted to fatty acids, or you die. Insulin is required to convert amino acids and simple sugars to fat. That's why type one diabetics become very skinny, even though they're eating a ton of sugar, they're lacking insulin. Liver failure patients lack the liver cells to convert sugar and amino acids to fat. So back to the bucket. If the bucket is empty, one meal a day, rapidly turned over and sent to the liver, sugar and amino acids must go to the liver and be converted to fat. But if you eat fat, it goes to the lymphatics and it's distributed everywhere because fatty acids are the only energy cell for the mitochondria, never sugar, never amino acids. So by eating one meal a day, you keep your bowels empty. You're, as long as you have fat somewhere stored in your body, you will thrive and survive days, weeks, and even months. So if you actually look at many women, they get fertile, they become pregnant, they then fast throughout the first trimester because plants, in my opinion, are poison to your body and your baby. And that's why the first trimester, many women have nausea and vomiting because it says, don't put that plant in my body. You're going to kill my baby. Mm. Plants make poisons mm -hmm. to kill things and control things. It's simple. Wow. Very, very, very powerful words. Okay. So OMADs are the way to go. And your Bebi diet, B-E-B-B-I diet is usually what you put your patients on to become fertile, to conceive. So just curious, does that also apply to our gentlemen? Men, women, young yeah. and old, all, everyone, every human being, every human being, in my opinion, should look at the baby's plan uh, and throughout life. Uh, but yes, men. So, so it's, it's an egg problem, it's a sperm problem, it's an embryo problem, and it's an implantation problem. So we have to think of it globally, right? You have to have good sperm, good eggs, and a good embryo, mm -hmm. but then you have to have a great place for implantation. Uh, and so, yeah, absolutely. This is not just for women, it's for men. Mm -hmm. It's for uh, all ages. What are your thoughts on birth control? Birth control methods and pills are illogical and possibly deadly and damaging for the human body. We do know that the birth control pill increases risk of blood clots and strokes. Mm -hmm. And so in general, I don't recommend birth control for anyone. And, and you know, we've kind of taken sex into, into sort of, uh, of uh, a fun zone. I mean, obviously we enjoy what, how it makes us feel. You want to be boring and you want to be very cautious and conservative of what you expose this beautiful entity to. What do you think about the whole notion of females needing to eat carbs? So not, not just for fertility, but even just to help with uh, de-stressing for sleep. Is that necessary? I've read a book, The World Turns Upside Down, I read it probably 10, 15 years ago, and it said carbohydrates have zero requirement in the human body. And I didn't know that as a doctor, but that one thing changed everything. So carbohydrates are never required in the human body, by the way, that's number one. Okay. Carbohydrates are like cocaine, heroin, um, and cigarettes and alcohol. They make us feel good, don't they? Mm -hmm. The reason they do is because in the ancient environment, when sugar was available for two to four weeks in the year, you wanted to eat as much as you can in order to gain fat, in order to go through the winter, okay? Mm -hmm. So you, eating carbohydrates from time to time to me is okay, but many people are allergic to fruits, seeds, nuts, and carbs, but they don't know it, right? Yes. And so it's the, it's the anaphylactic reaction that could kill you. My daughter's allergic to bananas and avocados, can't touch them, deadly. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, And I believe many people don't know they're having allergic reactions, uh, but these are the chronic diseases. So again, it makes us feel good. And that's why I do my one meal at night. Even if you add a carb, like a, like ice cream or a cookie or cake. And again, you can be completely no, or you can be rarely you consume one of these things, Mm -hmm. but if you're allergic to it, it could kill you. Mm -hmm. Uh, and sugar in and of itself, exposure all the time, a low constant level is what's deadly for us. Mm-hmm. Again, it's it's the three meals. But I don't eat breakfast because the moment you eat breakfast, you want to keep eating throughout the day. That's our nature. Yes. Because wanting to eat food is so natural because if it was in front of you 50,000 years ago, it wasn't going to be in front of you in a week. So if you did not consume as much as you can, you potentially didn't gain the fat and you were dead before you knew it. So all of our eating habits, our addictions are normal to the human body. But if you realize it, all of our addictions are to plant materials, injecting, smoking, eating, even putting on our skin. It's all plants that we're addicted to. So, uh, you know, I do, for me, I make my ice cream with a little bit of white sugar cane sugar, Uh, uh, but I'm to a point where I feel great. My body feels wonderful. I'm 66. Uh, I, I reward myself from time to time. I'm guessing maybe you're more of a moderator than someone who, you know, if they were to just taste that sugar, it would just lead to a binge only because I know myself, I would just start binging on that ice cream if I put any sugar. Well, well, as you develop your own sense of control, right? Yeah. So individually, uh, we are in control of what we put in these two places, right? And where we expose this body to. Mm-hmm. When you begin to, I expose my brain to my methods over and over and over again, so that I know that I can go out with friends and I can have those French fries cooked in duck grease, dipped in sour cream with salt from time to time. It's a simple sugar, not a complex green plant. I will not touch a green plant at all because the green, the, the, the raw vegetables, the raw fruits, the raw seeds, the raw nuts are really the deadly components, but everyone's going to be at their own spot in their journey. Yes. When they begin to know, let's look at, um, I, I can drink a martini from time to time. All right. But I have sips. I don't like guzzle three glasses ever. Yeah. Uh, so when you get to a point, you know how to care for this thing, mm-hmm. then that's where you're at. And I would say for a long time, I was like, steak, 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 steak. This is it. Fatty steak. That was it. But I've kind of gotten to a point where I now know the mastery of what I can do. And I would say most people can have a little bit because white, simple sugar is quickly absorbed into the GI tract. It quickly goes to the liver and it's quickly converted to fat. And so if you understand the physiology of the human body, you might be able to understand it. Now, I don't drink my calories of any significance ever. It's, it's, I do a carbonated natural mineral water, you know, that's what I drink. Uh, But, you know, everyone's going to find the thing that they want to eat or drink, but um, that's kind of how I do it. It took me carnivore before my bowel bleeding arthritis, hemorrhoids and and migraines went away. Mm -hmm. That's when I realized, aha, sneaky little plants, aren't they poisonous? Exactly. And I love what you said about, you know, finding that control. So I I guess I'm still deep in my healing phase. I'm still not there yet. I need to slowly get to the place where I'm healed in full control. Oh, absolutely. And, and, that's why I, every day I write, I meditate, I pray, yeah. I listen to positive blogs like yourself that are going to keep yeah. us in line to remind us of the things that, that we need to do. The problem with modern marketing, I mean, we're marketing to eat a healthy uh, uh, pyramid or my plate, which is actually deadly uh, to all of us. And the cause of cancer, heart disease, arthritis, psoriasis. Uh, bowel bleeding, the cause of fertility issues is a high plant-based, 
low animal fat diet plus three to six healthy meals a day. Next question, what do you think about icing testicles to increase testosterone and fertility? This is for guys, as we talked about, the yes. one meal a day. And yes, cooling the testicles can help. Because we because we're 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 all dressed up in our underwear and, and then our pants and everything that keeps our testicles close to the body yes. warms it up, right? Yes. So heat is damaging to DNA. So by cooling uh, with an ice pack or a cool plunge or certainly walking around all oh, like mm. in nature's uh, outfit is probably better. Uh, you know, we we're we're searching for for the warmth but we need to be actually exposing us to more cold and icing the testicles is one way to reduce the temperature of the testicles to reduce the DNA damage that happens from too much heat, right? So that's why the testicles hang away from the body uh, where the ovaries are, are in, in the core of the body, the temperature doesn't matter. But interesting yeah. for men and women who exercise, Yes. What do we do? The internal temperature of the body goes up. Yep. It goes up. It's damaging and deadly. So excessive exercise or exercise that heats up our body is deadly for us. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because I hate exercising. <laughs> uh, 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 listen, go for a walk in nature, but slow yeah. it down. But but if you realize it, even even today, if you just said, I'm going to go for a walk in the savannah in the jungle, yeah. you are at high risk of being killed by an animal right? True. There are less animals today, but that's not what we were to do. You went on a hunting expedition with your, with your, your group, right? We were, we hunted in packs like wolves and lions, mm -hmm. but we were not solitary animals ever. And being solitary in nature is deadly. I love walking. I love hiking. So it makes me feel so confident to hear that from you to not over exercise. I personally think for females, at least over exercising can really damage um, our health. It'll just stress us out. Any exercise is deadly. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, look at we're, we're meant to do things in life. You're meant to be creative to do sculpture. I do pottery and painting. Uh, and, you know, these are things that we're meant to do. We're meant to go for a walk with the partner, a friend. We eat to build the fat to allow us to have the energy to do and be in life. Mm -hmm. But we've made food entertainment and it's not to be entertainment. That's why a very boring, boring food plan is actually the best. And so far, you know, I don't know anyone who hates this, right? This is <laughs> no like one. radical, right. uh, amazing. So the equivalent of, for example, the, the icing, the cold for females, is there an equivalent? Would it just be a cold plunge, a cold shower? Well, you could do the cold plunge and cold shower, but the most important thing is get off the treadmill, get off the bike, yeah. uh, stop sweating. You know, on my live today, people ask me about cardio, about, yeah. about high intensity stuff. It, uh, mm -hmm. Never. So, so yes, uh, meditation, yoga, Tai Chi, go for a light walk. Go to your studio and you know, again, uh, create, so knit, uh, be creative. Yeah. But since nowadays we just buy everything we need, we don't make it. Uh, my mother sewed and crocheted. She even taught me to crochet and macrame, macrame as a kid. Uh, so we have to be more creative and slow it down. Use our minds rather than our muscles. We don't know muscles. We have plenty of muscles without doing this. Yes. That's radical. And on top of that, I would love for you to speak on the importance of community. I know that you value that so much. You have a Facebook group that is ginormous. You have lives, you bring on guests, uh, you interact with your community. So why do you think community is so important, especially with health? Well, we are suffering and we're suffering so alone today, especially after this two years of this, this COVID craziness. Uh, but also many of us are alone anyway, because um, we're, we don't have our family and friends in, in close uh, connection as much as we used to. I mean, my family is all over the place. And, and you know, we used to be in these little, little villages and even smaller than that. Mm -hmm. and, and we've lost that. And we've lost the support that we've had. So 
Um, really, over COVID, we've really grown tremendously. I enjoy these. I enjoy connecting and learning from, from you and others in this carnivore keto community. But also, since my specialty is fertility, um, I want to be there to help. And much of what I share and recognize is that it's it's about everyone out there that shares what they're doing to get there. And plenty of women have babies that are that are that are vegans and vegetarians and omnivarians and carnivarians. So really what we want to do is we're sharing ideas. Someone's going to listen and learn and say, well, you know, what I'm doing isn't working, might work over here. And the more we share that, the the better. So we are herd, we're somewhat of a herd animal. We're not the biggest. We're, we're, we're kind of small herd animals, yeah. not huge. And we need a connection of, I mean, my friends and my partner and my family, how critical they are. And now I'm looking, you're, you're in Seattle. I'm in upstate New York. Crazy. We can connect the people everywhere in this globe. And the more we do that, the more amazing things happen. I feel like we, we love being in a pack, you know, having our own tribe. It just makes us feel confident. We are pack animals like lions and wolves. Ah. Uh, when we talk about savages, really we came from that, that, that savage uh, ancient lifestyle. And in a, in a positive way, we need to look at it. Yes. We were hunters and we were likely scavengers, but we worked in small clans. Uh, Clan of the Cave Bear. If you haven't read the books, it's really good. Yeah. But but it, it, that's what we are, and I think that's what we're working to form here. Whether uh, it's it's a uh, 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 beef and and butter, uh, where whether it's kilts, whatever it is in life, you know, we're all forming something, and then we like to have a little bit of a pack where we can share thoughts and ideas and improve everyone's life so this is the last question i saved this fun one for last what are some of the craziest misconceptions that you've heard come across just practicing as a doctor uh, specifically when it comes to conceiving getting pregnant being more fertile well pretty much everything and anything works and and that we do know yeah. uh, the, the global population is growing despite the fact that we're eating mostly a plant-based diet. Yeah. And, and, and so I hear everything and anything and everything and anything will work. Uh, but, but if you're suffering, um, what I'm learning is, is that we are carnivores. Mm -hmm. That is really our nature for thousands and thousands and likely millions of years. I always say we came out of the trees not to eat the grass, but to eat the grass eaters. We figured out how to make spears and clubs and hunt in packs and, and I, I think, you know, as the more, as I continue to hear that vegetables are good for us and important for us and important on our diet, I mean, that's really the most, the, 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 the most false information that we're given every single day and that we need fiber in order for our bowels to move. I mean, the last I looked, if you did nothing, your bowels are going to move no matter what you do. Exactly. And, and, you know, this is kind of like the funnest one. that We have a new one coming. Ooh. I mean, I write it for everyone because okay. we want to invite the vegans, the vegetarians, the, the omnivarians and everyone into the, into the game plan here. Yeah. Back to the craziness that we need plants. <laughs> and in fact, we need fat because if you're not fat and there's a famine, mm -hmm. you're dead. They're crazy ideas, but um, uh, it's changed my life. And I'll do this until the day they put me in the grave. Start with where you're at. So you have to love the person in the mirror, number one. Yeah. And then when you give that person love, then you begin to listen and learn uh, of all the amazing ideas that you're sharing, Bella. So what a pleasure and, and, and a blessing to be with you today. Thank you so much, Dr. Kiltz. It is my privilege and honor to have you with me. Uh, real quick, share with all of us how we can find more of you. Where are you on? Well, drkiltz.com uh, or going to a CNY Fertility Dot com is our other place, but the drkilts.com uh, is a great place to find some information. All linked down below. Check out the description box. Thank you, Dr. Kilts.
Well, God bless you. Thank you. Hey carnivores, if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you all found this video inspiring and helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit a like down below. Please subscribe to my channel to not miss my future videos. Turn on the bell and notifications to always be notified and feel free to share this video with your friends and family. Dr. Robert Kilt frequently visits my community as a guest speaker. So if you would like the opportunity to meet him live on Zoom, ask him your personal questions about health, fertility, or anything carnivore, feel free to join my community and 30-day carnivore challenges to have this opportunity. Go to svgmeetup.com to learn more and sign up. I hope to see you guys in my next video. SVG out.